Hey everybody, my name is David House. I'm a master carpenter with uh, Budget Bath. And um, we've got a really special bathroom project we're working on in Springwood in Baltimore City. And behind me you'll see we're adding a, uh, a dormer to a bathroom. The, the, the bathroom that was originally there, you see the, uh, the original slope of the roof, which is just in front of the chimney right there. You'll see that that, that was the actual pitch of the bathroom um, before, we got a dog here that won't leave us alone. Uh, the, the customer would have to take a shower with their head kind of tilted like this and the shower head was only about nose high. And the customer said, we'd really like to be able to take a full bath shower like normal people do. And uh, when I did the estimate with this customer, I said, you know, I said, I can, uh, I can add a dormer here, get rid of that angled oh, roof and just, you know, pop it up a little higher and give them eight foot ceilings. And so far it's going, it's going just like, like clockwork, uh, no problems or issues. Some of the things I, I wanted to point out that are really important is the attention to detail that uh, the guys and I have done. Um, you'll notice that we uh, maintained the soffit overhang on the left here. And the original carpenters, when they did it, they did the soffit in such a way that this, the, uh, the soffit actually has a curve to it. But we've actually put ours up that's perfectly straight. Um, I'm going to take you... Um, I'm going to take you up a little bit closer and I'll point some things out with my hands so that you can really see the attention to detail. And ultimately, our, objection, uh, our objective is to, uh, is to uh, have the dormer look like it's always been there since the house was originally built. And I think when you see the final pictures, you'll, you'll see that we achieved that. So come on up onto the, we're going to go up on this little porch roof here and I'm going to point some things out and then I'm going to take you up on top and show you how we frame that. And uh, hopefully um, that'll be a, an interesting experience and you'll learn how, how complex some of these things can be and where experience really plays a huge role in the successful outcome of a, of, a, of a big modification like this, especially when you're trying to deal with an old house. Newer houses are so much easier. These old houses are tricky. So come on with me upstairs, up to the roof and, uh, and I'll, I'll teach you a little bit more. Okay, here we are now. The customers had some work done over the years. This, this old metal is not really original, but since this is the way it's done on the rest of the house, we're gonna do the same thing so it all matches. Uh, there's actually a little overhang here where the soffit kind of sticks in this slot. You'll see that we used galvanized spiral shank nails to secure this. I could have used plywood if I wanted to, but I actually used clear pine. It'll actually be a nice, more solid surface and it'll last a lot longer for our client. You'll also notice that our roof line comes down identical to the roof line here, which was not easy to achieve. And then we also were able to create the same size fascia here as here. So this will continue all the way through and it'll all be the same. Over here, what we did is you'll see kind of tough to see, Chris, if you can show them up underneath. These boards over here are called lead-ins. And those lead-ins, that's an old carpenter term, probably from turn of the century. And I had learned that when I worked uh, for the Maryland Historical Society, when I tore apart the old houses and the framing, I learned some of the tricks that those guys were doing. And this is the way this was done. Uh, but unfortunately, when the guys did the siding, they pulled the supports away. So this is actually sloped down now and not as secure as it once was when it was originally built. Um, but what I did to try and stabilize it is I, I framed this whole dormer up around the old roof before I removed the old roof and I sandwiched these planks under my new wall so that hopefully I'm creating some stability this way so that it's not going to be able to move like this. Um, in the old days, you'll see that this is wainscoting here. Well, there's wainscoting on the top and the bottom and they did that because the wainscoting was exposed and they didn't want to just have a piece of old wood there. So they actually put wainscoting, uh, one by four tongue and groove wainscoting. But interestingly enough, they only did it from here to here. So there was actually a seam going all the way up. And uh, you know, I tried to protect it as best I could and, and to solidify it a little bit more than it was. Uh, John's gonna end up doing the metal work and the soffit work here. You'll see that we're completely level Everything is nice, and we've actually got a nice little window going in here. Uh, we didn't cut it out yet because we're trying to decide. We, I think, I have a feeling that we're going to have to drop that window down about an inch and a half to two inches uh, because I think it's going to be too close to the soffit. But uh, I won't be able to make that decision uh, until the window comes in. 
uh, and they're today's Saturday. Unfortunately, they're closed. I can't get it. Otherwise, I would have done it. But here's a two by three, um, and John's going to do them and continue that all the way around. We're probably going to get a uh, a uh, a boom, um, uh, a boom or a lift, so John can do all this high work with a boom, and uh, and we'll knock that out. So come up on top of the roof, and I'll show you some of the compound cuts we had to make to uh, put this roof back together. So here we are, we're up on top of the roof, and one of the things that I noticed when uh, when I first did the roof, our work is perfectly level and square, and it's actually pretty precise, but we have a lot a lot better, better equipment than the old carpenters did, so I'm not really saying anything negative, but then a lot of times when this house was built, most of this stuff may have been cut by hand. Uh, we have power tools and, and all that kind of stuff, but the roof, this dormer, or actually this is the main part of the house, this end gable has actually sagged about an inch and a half to the center of the house as the house is settled in the middle. The outside has stayed where it is because that's on top of a foundation wall. And you'll notice that because of that, you'll see that the, the rafter is about two and a half inches off the peak here. And as we come closer and closer and closer, we're getting closer and closer to the ridge. By the time I get all the way over, I'm probably gonna be right there. And that, you know, I'm doing that because um, I want my, my roof to be level. I don't want to make my roof crooked to fit an already existing crooked roof. And when I do the shingles on top, it'll hide it, you won't see it. But at least our work will be done, you know, uh, done properly. Um, we've cut these here, we put these blocks in here to stabilize this. Going right on top of, on top of this old one by is fine. But here I decided to put plywood down because I wanted to give a, a nice solid contact here because this is not really going to be bearing any kind of weight on him, but this is a valley. This is going to get a little bit more pressure and, and, uh, and, and moisture and things, and I really wanted this to be solid, so I put this piece of plywood strip here just to sort of give a, a, some extra stability. Um, we're actually using three-quarter underlayment. We could have gotten by with half inch, but John said he wanted to do three-quarter, and we were also doing tongue and groove. Yeah, it's a little overkill, but there was three-quarter planking on the roof originally, so we kind of decided why not. Here's our two-inch vent for our tub and our sink. There's our new three-inch vent that we had to replace because there wasn't enough room in the floor joist to move the toilet over where we originally had wanted. Um, John's going to be building a cricket behind this little chimney here to divert the water around the chimney. You'll see that when we're done when I do the final video. Uh, we're going to do metal flashing down the valley and then uh, when the plywood comes over, um, like we've done here, uh, we're gonna do tar paper and then, a, and then a piece of sheet metal in the valley and then we'll shingle over all of that. So uh, if there's ever a hurricane or a tornado coming through this neighborhood, these people should run to our bathroom because it's gonna be the strongest room in the house. Thanks for watching and I uh, can't wait to show you the final product when we're all done in about, uh, about another 10 days. Thanks.